Hello everyone, Excedra here bringing you episode 36 of Modern Skyblock 3 Departed, a mod pack by Emozewa Gamer. So in the last episode we started random things in an imbuing station and we did a couple of things but mainly we've been getting into preparing for the next quest line which is going to be um, the engineering one. But uh, this one, I want to go to Psy, because I want to get rid of Psy. Psy is not a mod that I'm super interested in, and I had to go see some tutorials on how to do it, and even after the tutorial, I don't understand much of it, because it takes a lot of time and effort to learn it. But I found a great tutorial by a guy named Xod, that just lets you breeze through the spells with the minimum to do. So I'm going to explain to you whatever I can and we're going to try to get through this quickly so that we can get this quest line done and over. But just before we get started, I wanted to show you the beautiful cleanup that I've done. I've set up to get more a uh, chaos gems right here. I've removed a lot of the chest. I've put some armor stand, everything. This is the one chest that's not cleaned yet. But if you look in here, this is my crafting materials. This is like results of some quest and some uh, crafting that we made for some quest. Then back here, we have a better level of crafting canola oil. Basically, if you see, I have a farmer right here, which unfortunately has a range of nine by nine. So I'm not catching this line and three lines at the back, but it, it doesn't really matter. I thought that there was a way to make the range bigger, but that's plenty enough for what we need right now. And I started extraction with only one redstone engine, which means it's not keeping up with this. Like this is not emptying fast enough. The way I set it is I send it in here and then I have a diamond sorter to send the seeds here and down here the canola and it goes into this press and then that press and there's four all around. And if it doesn't fit in that last fourth one, it's going to go into that chest. Right now, at the speed that we're extracting, this is maxed out. Like, we're not maxing these out. Then, I have to admit that these pipes are really limiting. Because whenever you connect them, they can connect in a way that li liquid will stop flowing. So, basically, I changed the setup to just be, like, two into one fermenting barrel, same each side. And these two fermenting barrel are going to extract into a nender tank and we'll bring the liquid somewhere else from that ender tank because the ender tank's really the only one fluid storage that I have right now. But that will be continued in between episodes. So let's just try and run, like I said, true Psy as fast as possible just to be able to complete it and get it out of the way. I, I don't think we're going to be able to complete it, but we're going to get a far way along. So first going to take my focusing rod and my spell node and I'm going to make uh, four more spell, uh, three more spell bullet, not spell bullet, sorry, spell nodes because I want to be able to keep some of the spells. Some are actually interesting and I don't want to overwrite them. So let's grab this, this and this. Oh, I'm going to need three of these block. Let's go back here and let's make the extra node. No, that's not a good place because that one always has something in it. So let's just go three paper, three side dust, three spruce wood, and that's three more spell node. We're gonna put them aside for now. So like we learned last time, this is the wand, and if I go and get some redstone, the wand can be used without a spell to transform some redstone. So if I throw these four redstone on the ground, I can right click and transform them into side dust for a cost of 100. And that just comes back up and we have up to 200 right now. And the last ep uh, last time we played with Psy, the last thing we learned is that when you're not on the focusing rod and you hit C, there's a tutorial. And I started reading this and it's so long and basically what it comes down to is that the trick debug is a way of sending things to the debug window on the left right here. And the sector caster is us, we are the caster. So we learned that last time. <laughs> What we need to do is make our first spell. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say trick debug. I need a target. So I'm going to choose the caster as the target. So basically you click these little arrows and you can say top means use the item from the top or left or right or bottom. And then here I said that the target was going to be the caster. 
So now, because this is our first spell, we can right click with the spell node and listen to the sound. That means it got learned. Then we need to put the spell node into the focusing rod and you can have up to four and grab that back. Now, if we hit C here, this is how we get to the tutorial. But if we're on the wand and we press down on C and keep it down, it shows us the wand and the four spell node that can be in there. And we have the debug right here. So let's like debug and leave or, or take our finger off of C. So now I'm going to right click and we level up because as you can see, it says GC Entity Player MPX Far, LP MS3 Departed YouTube, and my XYZ coordinate. So that's basically our first spell. Now that we have our first level, we can hit C to get the second level. Second level is going to give us something called constant number and connectors. So we're just going to say learn that. And now I'm going to re replace the caster with number because I'm going to say debug the number four. And now I can take off the spell node or use another one to right click, or I can say shift right click to replace the current selected spell. So you have to be careful with that because there are some good spells that you might not want to overwrite. Now, if I right click in the air, it printed four in the debug window and we're now level three. And by the way, if you look at our power, we now have 600 of power. We're going to go up like that for a little while yet. So let's hit C and learn the next one. So the next one has an important thing. It has the add motion. It's a trick that lets you give motion to something or someone and an operator entity look. Entity look is a vectors aware of where an entity is looking at. Don't wanna get into vector. This is all kind of complicated stuff that I'm not super interested. So I'm gonna select this and say delete, select this and say delete. And then we're going to start again. This time we're going to start, did I hit learn? No, learn, perfect. So this time we're going to start with a trick. We still have not a lot of things here, so we can go over each and select them, but we want the trick add no motion. So we could just click in the search bar here and say motion and find the trick add motion. So now the trick add motion has three items, the target, the direction, and the speed. So for the speed, we're gonna set that left and we're going to say a number of two. I'm gonna keep it low because we don't have a lot of power. Then it needs a target. Well, the target obviously is going to be us. So I'm going to set the target up and we're going to say caster, us. We don't have any way of saying anyone else than us right now. And then the direction, well, what direction do we want to go in? Why not the entity look? Now though, the entity look is not complete because the entity look, we need to know which entity, what entity is looking. We only have the caster now, so we want to link this to caster. So we can we can go like this and put a target on the right and put a caster here. But then we have caster here and caster here. And the caster is a simple thing, but there are some things that are really more complicated. So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say target is up. There's nothing up. What you can do is right click here and this is connect to up. So it would put a line to go and connect to the up one here or bottom, put a line to connect bottom, which doesn't work here, or connector left or right. So if I click on left, as you can see, it says, oh, go grab the caster that's here. And now we have a valid spell. So let's shift right click that. And now we're going to look in that direction and we're gonna give ourselves a motion of two. And that use all of our power. So that's why if I'd put five or 10 or something like that, either the spell would have failed or I would have gotten damaged because I hurt myself. Perfect. So now that's another one done. See, we need to learn the next level. The next level is going to add the trick explode, the entity position. So before we had where an entity was looking, this one is the position of an entity. We have the vector ray cast that I do not want to get into explaining. It's, oh, it's really complicated. I barely understand it myself and I'm not really interested in the mod to learn it completely. So, we're going to make a simple spell with that. What we're going to do is we're going to remove all of this. Um, shift, control, shift, delete, which removes everything. We're going to right click. We're going to use the trick explode. And we're going to put a power on the left of 0 
0 0.01. Oh, sorry, I need to use number. So 0 0.01. Why? Because I don't want to kill myself. And I'm going to say a position on the right of position of what? We're going to say the position of an entity. Then what entity? We're going to say the caster entity. So basically, by grabbing the spell, I'm telling the system to make an explosion on me. And you heard the explosion. I even clicked twice. So it's a good thing I only put 0 0.01 or that could have caused some damage. You Technically, you would use the explosion on someone or something or anything, like not, not on ourself. Let's learn the next level. So the next level is entities. The same way we've only had the caster since the beginning, we're going to add a lot of them. Now we're going to have a nearby item or nearby living or nearby enemies or nearby animals. And we have an operator closest to point. So closest to point means the closest to wherever we might be right now or what we're using as the uh, location as. Entity motion. That's an operator to give motion to an entity. Operator random entity, focus entity. I don't know any of those. I never bothered learning them. So now this is a bit more complicated. Okay. And the way I made this spell not super happy with it because I can't really reuse it as much as I want it. So I'm going to shift the entity position up here. So I'm going to say entity position up here. I'm going to say explode on entity position. Then I'm going to delete this and delete that. So now the entity position needs a an operator. So we're a target. So we're going to say target to the left and here we're going to say the new one we're going to use the closest to point okay so now we have the closest to point and the closest to point here we're going to have to say the target and the position so for the position we're going to go to the left and again we're going to use the entity position oh no and uh, yeah, entity position because which position where the entity is, which entity we're going to uh, go down, and we're going to say that no, I'm not in the right one. This one, which target we're going to say down to the caster. So closest to point position the caster, and here we don't want the target. Here we're we're going to put the target up actually. So now closest to point, we need to choose a target. What's going to be the target? Well, for this example, just to make it easy, we're going to say nearby items. Okay. And now the nearby items need a position and a radius. Well, the position, we're going to use again, the entity position. So we're going to say position on the left and we're going to use a down connector to go and reuse the same thing with the caster. And the radius is, well, how close or far to this target like how close is the item do we look at one just one around or further around so i'm just going to say top here operator and i'm going to say 32 for now because i really don't want to bother with that so that's a spell so we're going to right click change our spell and i'm going to go grab an item somewhere i'm going to grab that one because we're going to need that one later we're going to throw it on the ground and when we right click whoa it blew up our block because it selected the explosion that we caused on ourselves now is being caused on nearby item and this is the item so we're now one level higher this is cool really cool but completely useless still and we now have when i'm on my rod 1200 of power so now we're getting into some serious power next level next level super simple it's number and it has an operator sum subtract multiply divide absolute and inverse so basically as you can understand when you're building a spell if you would want to add a number or remove a number or something like that that's what you would use so right now control shift delete we're going to go back to our really simple trick debug so debug this one and target up we're going to say sum and now we need the sum of at least two number so i'm going to go here and i'm going to put a number of one and here a number of uh, three and that's a spell. And when I right click in the air, it gives a sum of four, which is amazing. Not really, it's useless. 
But we're now at 1400 and an extra level. So we can get into vectors. And vectors, like this is complicated. If you haven't done any math course uh, that explains vectors, it's really complicated. But everything in a game and in Minecraft is vectors for direction, for position, for where you're looking, where something is. So let's just keep it simple. The minimum that we have to do is come here and say vector and use the, uh, no, this is the operator. Did I say learn? No, I didn't say learn. So we're going to use the vector construct, vector construct. And we're just going to keep that right click in the air. And it gives us a vector of zero, 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 because vector construct constructs a vector. And since we didn't give it any position, it just made one of zero. And as you can see here, X, Y, Z. So I could use this to, to name a position. I could go X, Y, and Z on the right. And then I could go number one, number 123, and number 111. And now when I click in the air, it built a vector of 1, 123, and 111, which is an X, Y, Z position. As you can see, not really useful for us, but when building complex spell, it might be very useful. Then we're going to get into alternative casting. Alternative casting has a selector focal point and a selector ruler vector. Um, the ruler vector is kind of interesting, which, so even though that's not part of the quest line, because I forgot to explain to you why we're doing all of this. We're doing all of this because we want to get to Psy Metal and we need 10 level to get to Psy Metal. So while we're waiting to get there, let's look at vector ruler because vectors are so complicated that you need something called a vector ruler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here, grab one gold, grab one wood and make a vector ruler to show you what I mean. So the vector ruler craft it like so. Whoa, there was a lot more gold here than I thought. Well, that could have been bad. I could have made way too many of these. So the vector ruler that we have right here, you can right click on the ground and it tells us this position. And then you can move forward and click again and 003. Why is that? Because on the X, Y, the Z vector, we're three away. Five, seven, nine, eleven. And then if we move this way, see? And then if we move up, uh, I can't go up enough here. Let's just go like this. Uh, no. Okay. So what I happen, I ended up doing is I shift right click. If you shift right click, you reset the ruler somewhere else. So technically now, if I go here, I can say trick debug. And I think that I can say vector ruler right here. Rule vector. So technically... If I use this and I right click in the air, oh yeah, that one doesn't work, sorry. So that's the one that makes sense because basically you're saying debug what has the ruler. So you see minus 993, if I come here and do this, minus 997, now it's using the vector ruler. So you could technically build a spell where you go somewhere in the world and you go, oh, I want to make my spell here and then use your spell and it would start from that position. The problem is that that's not considered as if we learned anything. So we're going to replace it with focal point, right, like so. And we're going to learn that. And that does count. Why does that one count? I don't know. The focal point is us. And that seems pretty much like using caster, but it's probably useful in some form of spell that I've not learned about. So the next one is block works. Block works is Trick, break, block, sequence, entity, actual look, vector axis, recast, vector project, trick, break, block, trick, place, block, and trick, place, block, sequence. So I got to admit, guys, here I decided I was a smarty pants. And I decided to say, you know what? I'm smart. I'm going to look at the trick block. I went in here and I, I removed everything and I said, break. Trick, break block, and it needs a position. This is so simple. I'm going to say position top, and I'm going to say position me. Guess what? It doesn't detect as the next level, just like the focal point did and the vector ruler did it. What you actually have to use is a sequence break block. And that, my friends, is a bit more next level. 
it's a bit more complicated. So I had to go back to the tutorial and be humble and say, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm going to look at uh, how the uh, break block sequence is. So basically you start from the break block and I would never have figured that out myself, but position up, target right. Why? Because we want to point to the same place because basically this is what the spell requires. This one points to the right, this one points to the top. That's why these connectors are so, oh, sorry. Th that's why these connectors are so powerful because I would have to, what I'm going to define now, I would have to do twice, which you don't want to do. So here I'm going to use a ray cast, uh, ray cast vector. No, sorry, this one, the vector ray cast. Okay. <clears throat> and the vector ray cast as a position and a ray. So position, I'm going to put here, ray, I'm going to put there. And I'm going to put both of those. So, sorry, um, I just went too fast. So I need a vector ray cast. And the vector ray cast is target up to, wow, I'm just searching my notes. So point up, right, target, right, point up. That's it, to a vector ray cast. Then the position is going to be up to a entity position. So entity position, of course, because we're doing the position. And then the next one, so we have the position and we have the ray. The ray is where an entity is looking. So we're going to say where an entity is looking. So now we need a target for the operator entity position that we're going to put here and where an entity is looking that we're going to put there because again, we can use the same for both. And I'm going to use the caster, me. And then if we go to break block, we have a max, which is a number because we're doing a break block sequence. So we're gonna keep this to one because that's going to break one block. And if I shift right click this, now I can, oh, I can take a cobblestone, put it right here. And if I right click it, it destroys the block. So I don't know, I think that if I put two and I had a power of two, I would end up breaking two blocks in a row in the direction that I'm looking. So by doing this and going like this, I'm looking this way. So it would break this one and the block after, but I don't know if I'm looking down a little bit, would it break this one and the one under? I'm not sure and I don't wanna mess with this. I already have ways of uh, of breaking multiple block. But what I'm going to do is this one. Oh, sorry, this one, one, I'm going to call it. Sorry, I keep doing the wrong thing. One, I'm going to come in the name right here. Wow, why are you not letting me do this? Okay, I wasn't out of the cell. So this one, I'm going to call it break block. Perfect. And I'm going to shift right click. <laughs> uh, is it named break block? No, it's still named debug. So I guess that this one I'm going to need to take the spell bullet out. Oh, I broke it. Oh, well, forget it. I wanted to remember what the break block was, but I'm not going to remember it. It doesn't really matter to be honest. So let me take that back and if I want it, I'll have to rebuild it. But now next level, Psy Metal Infusion level 10, Trick Infusion. So we're gonna learn that and this is super simple. We go here, we say Infusion. This is the trick, it's named Infusion. And now we're going to use another spell node, right click on it and we're going to add it to this. But when we use, sorry, when we use C, I forgot to take my wand back. When we use C on the wand, we can use the infusion spell. Now the infusion is the next quest in this. So let's go back right here. We're going to grab six gold. I'm going to throw on the ground. And then when I'm using the infusion and right click, voila, we now have Psy Metal Ingots, which means a quest completed. So let's grab this loot, 
claim back and that's the next level done so the next level is psi gem once you reach level 15 of psi you are able to turn diamonds into psi gems so now you've guessed what the next item I, a step is it's to make side gem. So we need to go up to level 11. What I'm going to do on my rod is I'm going to go back to the debug one because I don't want to replace my infusion. I need to keep the trick infusion. It's something that we're going to use. So now, oh, I still need to learn. So next, the next step is block movement. Trick, move block, trick, collapse block. So we're going to learn that. That is also an interesting one, and that's also one that, that I want to keep. Because basically, it's one of the most complicated spell that we make, if I remember in this example. And it is kind of something cool. So we're going to say move block. I'm going to use the move block. And then it, has, it needs a position and a target. So that's a bit compli complicated. We're going to put the position on the left and the target on the right. And we're going to make both of those a connector going up because we're going to want to reuse multiple things. Then we're going to here, we're going to put a, a vector, sorry, a vector axis raycast. And here we're going to put a vector, the other one, the vector raycast, not axis, the raycast one. And then in between both, we're going to do an entity uh, position okay so now the entity position is going to it needs a target so we're going to go up and gives it give it a target of the caster so us so up to now we're good we have a trick move block we have a caster and we're saying the position of the caster so the ray cast the position that it's going to use it needs an entity position use the position of the entity position caster the vector raycast needs a position that's going to be the entity position of the caster. So that's why I said like it's super simple by putting it this way. Like I would not easily figure that out. I would probably do two branch and repeat everything. But this is a way where you can connect both at the same time. And now this one needs a ray and this one needs a ray. And the last time we used the ray, we used the entity look. So we're going to say ray up, ray up. And then we're going to go go up and go to the right, go up and go to the left. And now here we're going to put an entity look, which is a ray. But that needs who's looking, target, the caster. So now in this neat little small construct, we ended up making a block, a move block that we're going to move toward where we're looking. So now I'm going to use a new spell, a new bullet, and I'm going to name this one move block because it is one of the cool spell. We're going to put it in the spell node and we're going to put the spell node in this rod. And then when we hit C, we're going to use move block. So now look at this. I'm going to put this one down right here. And if I click spell okay i screwed up something let me just review my design again so this is the vector axis this is the vector ray cast both have a position of this position of this it's the caster and this is the entity look hmm uh. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong. Move block. And position. Oh, I think I reversed them. Position, target. Let's just. Ah, okay. Sorry. So you see how confusing this is. But now I have a move block that when I right click, move the block toward me. Or if I'm looking at the up face, Move the block up, jump, move it up again, move it down, move it this side, this side. So it's kind of cool. And the reason why it's cool and I want to keep it is that if you have a glass and you put a glass down right here and you're like, oh, no, that's not where I want it. You can move it along to where you want it. So without having to break it. So I have a 
uh, still touch pick, so I can pick up the glass. But the idea that you can move it is something that I find really cool. So now we can hit C, and the next one is Elemental Arts. Elemental Arts is going to give us Smite, a random blaze torrent and overgrow and we're going to learn this and this each one explain each of them i think um overgrown is like a mass bone meal thing now we're going to delete all of this and we're going to go really super simple we're going to use a spite because you know why not and the position we're going to say here entity position uh entity position and the entity position is going to be the caster. And we're going to put this on back on the debug. And we're going to right click. And now I've given myself smite. And where's my water? Jump in the water. Et voila. So that worked but it's not super useful probably would have been better to do it on a mob maybe but see that couldn't be a weapon it does use a lot of power though so see it says it's going to cost 400 to cast a spell so this one is good we're going to move on with the next one movement advance which is going to give us trick blink mass blink mass add motion mass exodus this one we're going to keep super simple Delete everything, we're going to say blink, and now it's easier to search. We're going to say target caster, and we're going to say distance three. Oh, a number three. And this one, it's kind of cool. Honestly, let's just put it right here, and I'm gonna blink, and move three forward, and blink, and blink, and blink. So it's another one that is kind of cool, it's a I don't know why it's it, okay I know why it's not called add motion because it's not moving me. it's warping me it's like you blink and you go forward uh, so now we're ready for the next level so we're going to learn the next one loop casting loop cast index modulus and integer divide so basically the loop cast it's to be able to repeat uh, a spell like to cast a spell and loop it so we're going to say loop oh i didn't hit learn wow i gotta learn to hit learn so we're going to say loop loop cast index and you know what we're going to debug it because that's the simplest way of doing this and right click and we built a loop that does nothing but at least we're now level 15. so that it that's interesting in itself. But now we have to take a little break because we can't make a side gem. Why can't we make a side gem? Because our focusing rod is not strong enough. So focusing rod, there's a next level and uh, it's not focusing rod that I want. It's what was it called? Let me just search at Psy. Basically what we want to make is the Psy metal rod frame with four Psy ingots. So let's just go and grab one block of wood like this, no, one block of wood. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, and that's going to give us a Psy Metal Rod Frame. But if you remember, there are things that needs to be put into this. Last time we made a Humble Rod Crux, but now we're going to make a Quick Rod Crux. I'm going to grab a couple of this. Why the Quick? Just because it, it makes the spell faster it's something that costs a little bit more we could say quick rod or bright rod we're going to go with the quick one so we're going to make one of these then we're going before we add the minor rod crutch now we're going to make the flashing rod crux and i'm running out of side metal again let me just grab a couple more gold i'm going to make 10 more it's not like it's going to be a waste throw it on the ground we're going to Go back to our infusion and right click to get some more infused metal. So now we should be able to make the flashing. What's the medium again? Medium or flashing. Like I don't think that it matters. We're going to make the flashing. So this is the flashing. And then we need a glowing rod source or the next level, which is a sparkling rod source. We're going to make that one. 
And now we have all of the element for our next rod. We can come back here. We're going to show this Psi rod frame and these three items and pick up the focusing rod. We're going to put the old focusing rod in here, remove all the node, put back the new one. We're going to put the, the debug one, the infusion and the move block and get that back. But now, even if I'm on it, I don't have my power bar. Why? Because you cannot have two rod working at the same time. Now that I've removed the other rod, I'm all good. So we can, uh, let me take back the debug, which is now called smite. And as you can see, there's now a selector of six. And now we can hit C and learn the next thing. So the next thing is greater infusion, which is level 15. So we're gonna learn the greater infusion. Oh, we're gonna come right here. We're going to delete this and we're gonna re re uh, replace this one with greater infusion. And we're going to call it greater infusion. And we're going to use our last spell node to right click this and put this in here because this is something that we wanna be able to reuse. So now, greater infusion and what? It looked like I had two. This is like the weirdest thing. So greater infusion, right click. And that hurt me because I transformed three at the same time, but I was full life. So it's not a big problem. And we now have another quest completed. So I claim that. And this is the next to last. And the last one is making a Psymetal sword, Psymetal pickaxe, Psymetal axe, shovel, plate helmet, plate chest plate, plate legging, and plate boot. And that basically, it's super simple. It's just a lot of all of the material. See, this is a ingot and is a gem. And then where are the other ones? This one is two ingot and a gem. This one is two ingot and a gem. One ingot and a gem. This one is two gem, three ingot. Two gem, five, six ingot. Five ingot, two gem, and two gem, two ingot. Considering how much the gem cost and how little gems I have, this is another quest that I'm now going to put aside for now. Uh, oh, I said I'm going to put aside. I mean, I'm going to put the, the next item that I make. Again, it seemed like I had two. There's a really weird bug going on here. I say that, but I want to finish something. So basically, I want to finish getting the level because I don't want to have to do spell ever again. And now this, I'm really just going to try and rush kind of as fast as possible. So next is positive effect. It's going to give us a lot of like speed, haste, strength, jump boost, water breeding, fire resistance, invis <gasps> sorry, invisibility, regeneration, trick resistance. So these are all really amazing. I'm going to go with ace just because I want to do it quickly. I'm going to say target is going to be the caster. I'm going to say the power for now. I'm going to say two. I don't want to make it too complicated. And I'm going to say the duration is going to be two seconds. And as you can see, this is going to cost 240. So now let's come here, hit C and I want to replace the smite one. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to rename this one to debug because I want to know which one's my debug. Right click, and now if I click this, as you can see, it gave me haste. Right click, haste for two seconds, haste two. So I could make it a stronger one or bigger one or better one, but they're kind of expensive. And I, if I was going to do that, I would probably make a rod that has each of them so that, oh, I need a bigger jump. Let's hit C, let's, let's grab the high jump and give myself high jump for 10 seconds or as much as the power that I have permits it. Next one is called positive, uh, no, that one's done. Next one is called, ooh, wait, that didn't count? How did that not give me the level? Trick haste, oh, let's just try another one. Trick speed maybe, target, power, time, Let's put the time to five second. And so haste doesn't work, but speed does work. 
It's remember what I told you some are detected some are not detected so at least we got this one Next one is tool casting sector attack target block blo broken block broken side So let's grab all of that and that's one that's one of the really cheaty one Why do I say it's one of the really cheaty one because that's one that even in the tutorial it tells you just take sector block broken and what else do I need to do? Huh? We this one was the cheaty one that said just grab whatever. Uh, oh, sorry. So I have to debug. Whenever you're trying to cheat something, you usually need to use a debug. So debug block broken and says, oh, error. There's no vector. There's no nothing, but it still detects it. So I figured. <laughs> I don't really need to learn it. The negative effect, wither, slowness, weakness, ignite. Let's grab that one. And we're going to grab the one that's called wither. And with wither, we're going to say cat, uh, target us again. Then we're going to say power one to make it as weak as possible. We're going to say time one second again to make it as weak as possible. Use this one. And we gave ourselves wither, uh, wither for one second, and that counts. So that would be way more interesting on a mob or something. Next one is plate casting. Select your damage taken, attacker time. Uh, we're going to, again, just go super simple. And we're going to go with debug. And target is going to be time and time that's it right click in the air and that works and it gives us a time of 6490.0 we're almost done guys hold on with me we have two or three levels left only so next one is block conjuration which is another one of the cool one it can let you conjure a block sequence conjure some light conjure some block i like the idea of the light and i wanted to do that one my only problem with the conjure light is that it doesn't detect. So we're going to do the conjure block. Still have to learn this stuff. So this again is another one of the complicated one that I'm going to have to, uh, no, that, that one's simple. Sorry. I, I'm mistaked it with one of the last one that we have left to do. So the block conjuration is going to be a trick conjure block right here. We're going to say position is entity position. Oh, entity position, entity position. And of course the entity is going to be the target, the caster, caster, right up, caster, perfect. And now the time is going to be two seconds. So that should be good. Right click in the air and it works, but it does nothing. I could basically wait. I think that if I don't put a time, I don't think that I have to put a time. And if I don't put a time, see, it put a block on my position and it's going to stay here forever. The other one was just not there long enough. And these magic block in the air. See, now it's blocking me. I can't move forward. You can just click them to make them disappear. So technically, you have a, a mob running after you, you do this and it's block. And then you can just break it when you need to. Which brings us to next level, which is flow control. Trick sleep, trick sneak status, trick wrapper, trick die, and trick evaluate. This one, we're going to go simple again. We're going to debug some sleep. Uh, no, sorry. So sleep. And we're going to put a time of two. And basically it's what it's doing is putting a spell to sleep for two seconds. So I right click and now the spell was sleeping for two seconds and then rest would continue after. That's useful for the loops. Like when you're doing loop casting, you might want to say, well, sleep the spell for two seconds or 10 seconds before it continues. So this is the last complicated one that we're going to make. And that's the last one that I find is going to be useful smell tree. Smelt item, nearby smeltable, trick smelt block. So this one's, like I said, a complicated one. We're going to use the trick smelt. 
smelt, not block, because block has to be put down. We're going to say smelt item, which will let you smelt an item that's on the ground. Then on top of that, we're going to say uh, the item one. Uh, uh, not the item one. What is it name again? I'm just trying to remember the name. It's uh, cl oh closest to point. We want to grab the closest item to the point. So we're going to say the target is the closest item to the point. Now closest to what? So we need a position. So we're going to go left and we're going to say our good old entity position like so. Which entity? We're going to say the caster, of course. And then here we also have to put a target. So what target? An item that's closest, an item, but an item on what position? Well, we already have a position of the caster, so I can put the position again and the caster again, or I can just go like this and say uh, left, left, bottom, and connect it this way around. And this, again, we need a radius for how far to find the item. We're going to say 32. And this one, we're going to call it, no, I wasn't out of my selection, which is why I did that. I'm going to say 32, enter, and I'm going to double click out, and I'm going to call this one smelt item. And I'm going to craft one more bullet um, uh, node spell, sorry. So right here, I need some paper. I want to keep that one because I'm going to show you it, it is kind of useful. So one, two, three. And I'm going to go and craft another node. I still have space for it anyway. So it's not like it's causing me a problem. And believe me, guys, we're almost done. We're really, really close. So this is going to give us another spell node that I'm going to put in here. That I'm then going to put in here. Grab back my rod. And then we can say S, a C, sorry, and use the smelt item. And now if I take my cobblestone and throw my cobblestone on the ground, right click, this is the closest item that's laying nearby me, right click, and it's melted into a stone. So I like that. Why do I like that? I like that because if I need a, oh, I don't have any scent. But what I wanted to say is that let's say I need a glass. I'm like, oh no, I'm out of glass. I can take one scent. Imagine that this is a scent can throw it on the ground and just go like this and cook the sand into a glass. So that's why I wanted to keep that one, why I felt that that one was a useful one. Which brings us to trigonometry. Again, it's adding all things that you could use in a spell, but we're going to go to cheat way again, control shift delete. We're gonna say debug, and we're going to debug pi. Oh. The constant pi. I'm going to make sure that I'm back on my debug. Oops, sorry. Right click and look at the bottom left. 3.14159265, blah, 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 blah. Which brings us to level 25. And the next is detection and focus. Switch focus slot, item presence, and block presence. Let's learn that. So this brings us to another one that's kind of simple. We're going to say trick switch and focus switch and focus position i'm just trying to look at my notes so switch and focus and we're going to give it a position of two is that really switch and focus oh no that's not the right one so focus so operator no focus why is this the switch focus slot? Trick switch focus slot. And position, I'm going to say number two. Is that enough? You have reached level 25 while there are no more level to earn or unlock. Yeah. Okay. So it was one of those. I don't know why. And we now have 5,000 which is the maximum. Next one is memory management. And memory management is basically the ability to save things in a variable. So save, trick save vector. We're going to go trick save vector. Uh, 
target entity look so entity look which entity target we're going to put the caster perfect and we want to save that where we're going to save that to position number one in memory let's click that et voila level 26 so now we're at secondary operator trigonometry square min max all op mathematical operation super simple we're going to go back here we're going to go debug debug target is going to be square and we're going to do the square root of two right click et voila square root of two is four we're now level 27 which brings us to the last item of the game well of the this tutorial the eidos manipulation which is going to give us reversal change log and anchor let's learn that and that one is a cool one unfortunately useless also but it is a cool one so we're going to go and say eidos reversal and we're going to say time let's put five and we're going to call this one i need to click out reversed uh sorry reverse last five we're going to put this in here and now we're going to count together count with etc one two three four five and let's do the spell <gasps> and you go back five second in time so i haven't tried that and i'm kind of scared of trying that but let's eat my applesauce and now let's go and be like, oh wait, no, I fell. And I dose reversal. So we have now a way of saving ourselves from falling always. So we're always going to be good. But that brings us to completing Psy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a small time lapse. And I'm in my small time lapse, all I'm going to do is make all of the diamonds and all of the items that I need to complete this. And once I have all of the diamonds and all of the ingot to complete this, I'm going to end the episode, which is going to bring us to the next episode. And in the next episode, we're going to do our chaos, because if I look at this, this is empty. I have 31. <laughs> Let me just grab so that we can continue making some more. I'm going to keep 20. Put all of this in here, and I'm going to go store the 20. But in the next episode, with this 52... We're going to craft our chaos orb. We're going to grab all of our glowing roses if we're lucky because we're going to make a lot of glow rose fertilizer. We're also going to complete the psionic armor and that should take not even the first five or ten minutes of the episode and we're going to finally get started into heavy machinery. So guys, I'm sorry if you disliked the Psy episode but it needed to be done. I'm going to include in the bottom uh, of the description of the videos, the link to the Zog YouTuber and the video that explained Psy how to get there as fast as possible. And you guys might figure out some really cool spell because there are cool things that you can do. But for me, I think I'm going to take this and retire it and not look at it for a little while because I'm kind of done with this uh, overcomplicated mod that if we were in a multiplayer world, might be interesting it might be fun to be able to use spells on other people and make magical walls and stuff like that but there's so many more exciting mods in here that i don't really need that so i'm going to go in my quick time lapse and make the material that i need to finish this quest line and put it aside and get ready for the next one so guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode bye now